but I still think it's got a lot more inside. So I just got the announcement on my phone. Andy Demi is now live on Facebook, which means that you're here with us right now. Good evening or good afternoon, Mr. Demi, depending upon where you are in the world. For you, it's a good afternoon, uh, right? It is a good afternoon. It doesn't look like it when I'm looking outside, but yeah. <laughs> by two minutes. It's a good afternoon by two minutes. Good yeah. afternoon to Slav as well. He's tuning in live on YouTube. We've got Connor live on Facebook. We've got Gary live on Facebook. We've got Yanis live on YouTube. We've got Khan in the house. We've got Raj and we've got Nick. Am I the only one who continually refreshes the Facebook group as soon as the clock strikes 9 p.m.? No, that will be me as well, mate. And we've also got Anita on this side of the world representing the, uh, the Aussie contingent. So, look, let's jump straight into it because, as per usual, it's crypto and there is just a lot to talk about. So over the last seven days, from a professional trader slash investor now, I guess you would be classed as, give us your breakdown of what's gone on since we last all got together um, over a week ago. And um, and yeah, what what a top a top line kind of breakdown of what you're expecting over the next seven days, please. Yeah, I mean the the, the, the thing that I'm noticing is what I've been expecting is the altcoin to start catching up. And that's what we've started to see. So um, for for a while, like when we were speaking last week, um, I mean, days go so quickly. Uh, but the, mm. the, you know, <laughs> a week ago, you know, we were talking about Bitcoin and, um, you know, basically like that, that was moving higher. Um, and the alt's not following. So it was kind of a bit unusual. And it now seems like Bitcoin has just stored a bit. Um, it, you know, we, it broke its all time high and, and now it's come back below its all time high. And it's just kind of now trying to find its, uh, like trying to do a price discovery. Where, where is it going to kind of hold to then potentially then go and break its all time high again? So that's kind of where we are with Bitcoin, but the altcoins, I think, is where the value is. I think, um, I mean, I know on a personal note, some of my holdings have exploded higher. Some of them are still um, waiting to go, and I'm waiting for them to go. So <laughs> we're just uh, at a stalemate. And, and look, you know, some some of the some of the guys that I work with, my uh, my one to one clients, sometimes contact me and think, like, you know, is this ever going to go? And you've just got to be patient. You've just got mm. to be patient. You know, if it's a good project, just hold it and be patient because you just don't know when it's going to explode. And it's one of those, like, sometimes you think, oh, should I, should I maybe sell it and then buy something else and I'll get back into it when it's ready to go? You never know when it's ready to go. You never know when it's going to immediately die. And, and I'll tell you, like, some, some, some coins like I held for ages and like they, they weren't doing anything. Harmony, as an example. Um, I actually thought I sold it and then I worked out that I didn't sell it and I was quite relieved. <laughs> <'cause>, uh, <laughs> That's brilliant. It. I literally couldn't find it anywhere. I was like, what, did, I, did I sell this? And then I worked out it was it was staked. So that's why I couldn't see it in my list. Um, yeah. It, isn't it funny? Isn't it a nice surprise when you kind of see coins that you're not sure about? Like, oh, maybe they may have been sold and then they turn up in your wallet after they've had like a nice little pump and you're like, oh, this is awesome. Yeah, it's nice. It's very nice. Someone's looking out for me. That's what it feels like. Someone's looking out for me that I don't know how I've got these coins in the account, but they're there. So thank you, whoever it is. Crypto Angels of the North. I'm not sure. But um, yeah, no, I feel you on that, mate. With regard, And you've got so many. It's like, you're just like, I didn't... Like so, there's levels to your investing game. There's there's thought I sold it, actually realized I haven't, forgotten about, or the best one is, yeah, totally forgotten about, didn't even bother about, and then literally 
that one's like mushroomed up into something massive. Yeah, do you know what? I literally started this morning. I was like, I need to, I need to actually just collate this because I've got wallets over here and and some of the stuff. Like I've got to say, Coin Stats is great. It's really helped just having everything in one place. But you still still need to keep on top of it because when you stake the coin, you, you, it's not visible. So um, and and certain wallets can't be connected on on smaller coins. So mm. you still have to be organised. Uh, but yes, you're right. I own so many <laughs> projects so many like, it's, it's like the london like, museum for cryptos Absolutely. I, yeah your wallet must be like the london museum for crypto crypto and coins you, so look this morning mate you think i don't own any like the way i'm hunting them trying to find more <laughs> i know you mate i know you better than you think um so look just checking in with a few more hellos claire's live on youtube great to have you with us claire we got roy in the house and we got monica Hello, boys. Yes, we are here with you for the next however long. Uh, Connor made an interesting comment. He swapped his sheep for Matic, but still not a bad thing. Um, and good, good idea. where was it? Here we go. Con, yeah, anything anti sheep is always going to get a double thumbs up from Andy Demi, isn't it? So um, Con saying, what does alts stand for? So, yeah, if you're – if if you're like Con and you're not sure, or you're totally brand new to the show, my name's Gavin, I'm the host, by the way. This is the professional trader extraordinaire, Mr. Andy Demi, former hedge fund trader slash turned pro bono um, charity work to help the world enjoy cryptos. That's a nice little catch line, just made it up. But we, sh we digress. So altcoins, please can you let us know what that actually means? um alternative comes to my mind i can't i can't have yeah. i think it's alternative coins so it's anything that's not uh bitcoin basically uh um, yeah that that's that's what it represents so even even ethereum is an old coin but i think it's alternative but I, i'm sure google would tell us immediately but my brain is <laughs> like frozen right now to say exactly oh, that said, yeah so guys let us know what you've been hearing in the in the crypto sphere um the world of cryptos any news any far-fetched kind of conspiracy theories whatever it is just put them in the comments and share what you've been seeing because obviously there's there's a spectrum of complete craziness element of truth actually i can see that happening they seem to be the three sections of, of cryptos right with regards to assimilating information and then applying discernment that's the important thing um that we're being tested on a lot with cryptos at the moment that's a lot of big words there you just used you you're welcome keep, mate you have to keep it simple for people like me <laughs> <laughs> you've been you've been reading up i see uh gavin i always like to think that i'm reading up it's whatever i can try and remember yeah that's the question yeah, did, did you did you actually just ask me a question? Because <laughs> I did, and here's the thing: like you just said, how fast the week's going. I can't even remember what was in my head like a minute ago. It's crazy, like what's going on at the moment. So, no. yeah, I did ask you a question. If anybody remembers it, let us know because we're both stumped right now. Um, ah, yeah. There's a lot of craziness going on in the world. So there's there's three kind of spectrum, right? There's like absolutely crazy. This is like hopium and FOMO mixed into one. There's mm, maybe this could be true. And yes, I can see that one happening. They seem to be like the three main areas with crypto. And I guess part of our job is to try and apply discernment and not get caught up in the whole circus. Um, do you mean like how people are sort of viewing cryptos? How people are viewing it? How, how it's being portrayed, how it's being presented, how different projects and different opportunities are kind of, yeah, all of the above, really. Do you know what I mean by that? Um, partly. I think oh, so. we can move on. We can move on if you yeah, want. I think that would be a smart idea because otherwise people if might it's, tune out. If it's not hitting the mark. But if someone else gets what I'm saying, please let us know and I'll give you a call now and you can come on and we'll yeah. just have a little chat about it. Just to... Great. Just to raise the frequency a little bit, but one thing I wanted to share about you, which is really interesting, you know the game Pokemon, which was like absolutely huge. 
Yeah. I don't know if you've heard about this, but Binance, they're launching a, a Binance one. Okay. Yeah, and there's going to be a whole bunch of stuff. I think there's going to be like uh, NFTs involved in it. Um, and like you basically play the game and then you collect live cryptos. So like this whole gameplay thing is massive. Obviously, you know that more than anyone else. But to actually accumulate it whilst playing like a day-to-day -day game on a gaming platform, whether you play on your phone, whether you play on your computer, it's quite interesting. And obviously Binance, regardless if you love them or hate them, they are developing quite a lot of things in the crypto world, right? They're, they're just trying to make make hay while the sun shines, as it were. Yeah, look, you, you can't argue with Binance. I mean, there's there's some flaws, but um, they're still the number one exchange by, by miles, like in terms of the amount of coins that they offer, um, the liquidity, all of that stuff, which is very important as, as you scale up what you're, what you're buying, um, you need liquidity, especially in the crypto space where it's still relatively new. So if you're buying smaller coins, um, you'd always want to use the biggest exchange available. So, um, and yeah, you are right. They are innovators. Um, they don't necessarily look for, to make things perfect they just launch and then they try and improve which is um i guess it's a little bit like an um, ethereum's kind of uh, approach um and then you've got someone like cardano who's not done that um who is trying to get the perfect project so you know ethereum is number is, is the number one altcoin for because they were first to market um mm. so and, and Binance is the number one exchange because they were the first to market, like to, to really grow as an exchange. And they and because of that, that it's allowed them to innovate even more, right? Because they've got the money, they've got the resources. So it's just uh, they're they're fast at doing things. They don't need to make them perfect, and people stick with them um, because of that reason. And I would always choose Binance over any other exchange at this moment in time interesting gary's said plan b tweeted earlier 9 55 a.m hashtag bitcoin bull market second leg has started i'm not sure if uh, what end of the spectrum that's on or if that's some news that you've heard but obviously we're going to go into our bitcoin price prediction so we'll be able to confirm that with a yay or a nay a little bit later on nick saying um he's had some liquidity problems on pancake swap hard to buy 100x coins or like high return on investment coins if no one is selling them and yeah that is definitely a real thing the more obscure coins that you that you get especially on platforms that aren't as liquid yeah um, and also the spreads as well and the price that they're going to buy it back from you or that they're going to yeah that they'll buy it from you all of these things definitely have to be taken into account for sure what's your kind of thoughts around that yeah i mean they're yeah, it's, it's a tricky one. Like when you are, when you want to buy these kind of smaller coins, you don't want to invest too much money, but then you take into account the fees um, and the spread that you're paying and it almost makes it not worth buying. So it, it's a tricky one. Um, there are some exceptions sometimes. You just have to look. Um, yeah, just look at all the exchanges available. Like if you go to CoinMarketCap, you can, I mean, what, what you can do with some of the coins is potentially is to buy them on maybe a lesser known exchange for a decent spread and then move it over to a wallet and store it. So mm -hmm. you, can, you can try that. So if you go to CoinMarketCap, often it will list all of the exchanges available um they may not get all of them though so you shouldn't just use that as the as the full list you can also if you've got some smaller exchanges you can just check just in case they're on there um but yeah it's a it's a tricky one um i think for most like especially if you're using something like uh uniswap with the gas fees are on the ethereum network you know once you take all of that into account it's, it's not even worth investing 200 dollars into something you know, if you're paying yeah. to a hundred dollars in, in fees, like, <laughs> but how do you, how do you, if you don't do it, how do you get these potential hundred X coins? You know, if you really believe in the project, um, I guess you either put slightly more money into it or you try and find a, another way around it. 
but yeah, it's uh, it's one of those things. But yeah, in terms of selling it, I think it's one of those where you don't really should be thinking about selling it and until it's actually mainstream and popular, in which case you won't have a problem at that point selling it. It's only right now when it's when a coin is new that it's difficult to basically get you know to get the right sort of spread, I guess, and liquidity. Yeah, and that's an interesting anomaly itself, isn't it? Because if um, you want to get in pre-market, you want to get these coins and projects as close to pre-market as possible. And then there's the next phase where it's just kind of first launch. And then by that stage, when it becomes mainstream, people have already made their 2x, 3x, 5x. Um, but obviously, with that comes more risk, like you say. And, and it's almost like if you're doing it pre-market, you've got to be prepared to just sit on it and, you know, kind of just ride it out i suppose like what you were saying earlier yeah i mean it's it's also an idea not like with with things like that especially if you're doing it on uniswap you try and get the lowest like if if i don't know if people, for people that don't know uniswap is a decentralized exchange and it deals with ethereum based tokens so you want to try and find a time when the um when the Ethereum network is not congested, because when it's congested, basically you end up paying massive fees. And the other thing is, is like, don't scale in, don't buy a little bit now and a little bit later, just buy what you're going to buy because it's an, you only pay the gas fees once. So, mm. um, so yeah, just, just little things like that. Whereas if you're buying on a centralized exchange like Binance or Qcoin or whatever, you can buy a little bit now and then wait a bit and then buy a bit more. Um, and, that, and that's the, the, the current advantage of centralized exchanges, I guess, um, over the, um, the alternative. But, but yeah, and some coins, you can't get them. Um, and the thing is, is like once they list on Binance, obviously, normally they get a big pump because it's easy. Mm -hmm. Got to remember that, guys. Once it gets easy, so if you mm -hmm. imagine something popular and easy to buy, well, you're not going to be getting the bottom price. The, the thing is, is like when you buy, when you get something that maybe is a little bit unknown and is on a, an exchange that not very many people are going to be able to do and use, you're going to most likely get a bargain. And that could easily be the hundred or thousand X coin that you're looking for. So, yeah, it's kind of worth, I, I think it's worth going to that little bit of extra effort. I always say like, you know, how many people would be willing to do this? Not very many, which in which case once it lists those people will then want to jump in right so mm -hmm. um so yeah th don't kind of give up on something just because it's a little bit complex you just got to figure it out or ask yeah it's true um yeah and even that platform that you show um when we released the program i had no idea about that and just even to go on there and find out all the social media stuff with the projects and then see the score that they've got and it was just amazing how kind of that works out as well and and then when you can do extra work on top of that and put all of this together it's um like you say who's really willing to do that work i know quite a few people here are willing to do that and they're obviously starting to see some of the results but in the mainstream yeah it's still people everybody it sounds great to to to, to ride a 100x train but actually who's actually prepared to go through all of that and it would be great actually another time to go through that and actually talk with you about that about riding these waves like resisting the temptation to cash out um i mean i've been looking at coins that like from last december that have like 100x 1000x and gone actually gone through the charts and gone wow it went right up it started at like 25 cents it went up to like three bucks it came crashing back down to like 80 cents would i have really sat through that or would i have sold out because it's now at 12 bucks. And then and then you see the next retracement, you see the next swing up, and then you see the next retracements as equally as aggressive. And it's like, okay, well, that retracement, the second retracement was at three bucks and 74 cents or whatever it is. If you got in at 25 cents and you rode through that that first savage retracement, now you're at 374, but it went up to like seven. So you're going to be like, oh, shoot, should I have sold that and then bought back in? There's all of all of this psychological stuff, which obviously you're one of the few people that kind of has gone through that. And there's so much even in that that maybe we could do a whole segment on that.
maybe in a couple of weeks time yeah i mean if i just jump in on that very briefly like the the simplest solution is 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 to is to have diversification i've said it many times mm. but like if you've got if you've got 100 coins you're, you're not fussed if that happens like because it's just at one small drop in the ocean of your portfolio you're, you're looking at your portfolio as a whole um i guess like alberto is perfect at this actually alberto um uh, our business partner um he runs like algos and he runs over 100 algos why <laughs> because it means that you know if one's not performing right now the other one's performing and he has like a steady equity so it's like as long as your portfolio is good you're going to have these ebbs and flows in certain coins. Oh, this one's got pumped. Oh, this one actually, Elon Musk has tweeted about, and it's now, you know, uh, gone down half. But as a portfolio, is your money growing? And that's what you care about, really, ultimately. So when that happens, it doesn't really affect you. Now, imagine if all of your holdings were in one coin. You're going to be so attached to everything that happens in that one coin. It's like, oh, my God, mm -hmm. you know, I was I was up this much, and now it's, I'm... I've, I've given that money back so that that's 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 kind of in my in my opinion that's the way, that's the way to solve it great advice mr demi dropping the knowledge bombs already so look with that being said let's jump into um because it it's not bragging it's just to show you guys what's possible especially the new people these coins are out there and there's many people that are getting getting to ride these trains so let's look at a coin that you found recently um to give an example of that let's showcase this this out to people yeah um we we can look at um let me um bring in my screen and see what we can go through so and i'll and then i'm gonna share but just while Andy's getting that up, guys, it's a really good, it's a really interesting exercise to just look at a coin that's had a massive growth and just look at the chart on a daily, even just a daily, and actually go into the chart and just look at its ebbs and flows and its growth and retracement and just, yeah, prepare yourself for that ride because hopefully you will be catching a few coins if you haven't already. And it's just, yeah, it's a really interesting process to, um, to do, that's for sure. So... Yeah, and and and, I, and I, I'm I wasn't sure like there's there's so, there's so many and and I've and I've got more in my portfolio that I think I'm gonna explode higher at some point and 100x you know there's and there'll be some that that don't uh, for sure and and sometimes you just you have to be patient because like you don't know when it's gonna happen like I said before and it may not happen in this cycle because projects take a little bit of time but. The key thing is to believe in what you're investing in and then um, and then be strong minded to hold it. So I, I'm, I'm going to bring this up because I mentioned it um, in a video a couple of weeks ago that um, this is one of the ones that I had invested a, a small amount in. Um, and I honestly it wasn't even on my radar it's like i have like levels of investment that i make so there will be like some projects that are literally tiny 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 market cap interesting projects lots of potential but it may die because it's just very very small so in those ones i put the smallest stake and then there's other ones that are small but have done a few things right they're they've teamed up it might be the team it might be uh, something's telling me that actually it's a little bit further down the line. So the investment will be slightly more. And then I have established ones like your atoms, like I mentioned last week or Ethereum or Polkadot or whatever, or Cardano, where the project is solid. It's got massive community it, and it will grow, but it's not going to thousand X or hundred X. But, and that's where the, the biggest investment goes because that I know my money is safest there. So this happened to be one that, and I've got probably, in this bracket, I've got about another 20, maybe 10, 15 um, that fall into this bracket. Um, and you can kind of see, this is, a, this is a good example, Gavin, of what you were talking about. So I did not even have this on my radar. And I looked on CoinStats and I was like, oh, my God, 
my biggest gain of today is salt. I'm like, what? What is this? What's going on? <laughs> like, because I, I, I literally bought it here, right? When nothing's going on, and all of a sudden, this happened, right? And now, <laughs> now it's obviously pulled back. But I've got no. This this makes no difference to me. That is pulled back. Like it wasn't even on my radar. I, I hadn't. It's not something that I'm emotionally attached to. Oh my god, I'm going to give my money back. If it went down here, yeah, it'd be like a bit like, oh, you know, but it's not going to really affect me. So, because I don't know how far this is, this can go. And if I interfere with it, wouldn't, I'll never find out. Like, I'll never be in it, right? Who knows where, where this can go? And this could be a huge, I guess it's a little bit like, um, you know, we've spoken about Luna, right? Luna, when it was basically, you know, here at 13 cents. And then as soon as it starts to go up, like to maybe, I don't know, uh, $1, you're like, oh, or $2. You're like, oh, let, let me take my money out, right? But now it's $45. And it's like, well, you're in the crypto space, really. You're, 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 you're investing in basically new new technology new ways of doing things in the world things take time you know sometimes you're in a project that people don't appreciate and don't know about and don't know how it's going to change how we do things like microsoft and google and amazon right we didn't really appreciate them when they started to go up back in you know the early 2000s but now mm -hmm. they're like wow my god can we live without google and amazon uh, who knows like you know and 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 so that's why like I, I really think that this is a good example of, of what you were saying before um but there's there's so many of these um that i could share but the point is is like if you do your research correct and you stay you stay the course um you're going to benefit financially more than you can ever probably even envisage right now and so that's kind of like a, an example but like I'm, I'm happy to also bring up maybe something that <clears throat> is a bit more recent to something that's not going to necessarily thousand x but we can we can talk about something that i think has potential to go much higher and, and, and in my opinion is still at a decent price to get in on yeah cool so so let's talk now about a mystery coin What's the mystery coin that could have the mystery ROI? Because like you say, you've got another 15 to 20 of these puppies lined up. So, um, yeah, which is the one that you want to share this week? Yeah, it, it, it was a tough choice because I know, like you said to me, you know, choose one. Um, and I was like, there's so many that I've got that I want to share. that I. But I, I, I'm going to choose one that I think – maybe uh pe maybe people are invested in it maybe they're not but it may diversify you a little bit and, and for me it's axs i think this has the potential for a 10x even from where we are right now so i, I think axs is undervalued because the gaming industry is huge and if you kind of look at um you know if you, if you kind of do a comparable with the gaming world you know if, if this is going to be the new way of gaming then it is still really really small and i think a 10x is a minimum now there could be new competitors and whatever else but i think this is really really good value now i'm going to do the technicals here guys but one thing that i will say about axs and some of you may be familiar with um with it or not is that right now as of the last time I checked, you can still get over 100% APR on Binance. Now, here's a coin that I think is undervalued, even at this price. Like, I mean, yes, it would, when you look at this chart and you think, man, it would be nice if I bought it down here, right? But, you know, you could, you might be looking at this chart in, in three or four months and, you know this chart could be and we'll talk about potential like where, where it's going to go but it, it could double it could triple but the great the, the 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 amazing thing right now is and it's kind of unreal you can still get 
about, I think it's about 120, 130. You've got, the 90 day one has run out, but you can get for 60 days over 100% APR on just by holding and staking this coin, which I think is, is incredible. So, you know, I think right now this is a still a good investment. If you're in it, great. If you're not, um, you might want to consider it still, even at these prices. Okay. Um, and so let's look at the technical point of view. Um, from a technical point of view, the, the thing that, I, well, firstly, I, this looks bullish, right, guys? I mean, you can see here we have basically um, a push up and then we have a bit of a, um, a bit of a flag here. And so typically what we'd be looking for in just real simple terms is you'd be looking for if this flag were to break out, you'd be looking for something along the lines of that as a potential target, which, you know, considering the bullish sentiment around altcoins and so on, and considering that this is built up a real, this is this is as bullish as you can get, guys, on price action. Market flags, stochastic RSI goes to oversold, and look mm -hmm. how it's just gone through that minus 20 there. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. And look at the last time we did that, guys. The market went to over 20, and look how the market just spiked up there, right? And that's easily possible right now. Now, if that happens and the, and the flag does play out, you'd be looking at basically a, a, a target of about 234 if you wanted to take something like that on as a trade. If you're going to go long term, then you don't need to really worry about um, – like those targets now we can also possibly connect this channel that it might give you it might be like a shorter target um so if if this happens right and it goes up in the same kind of speed you know you you might kind of find a little bit of resistance around that sort of 200 there as well so it could be a case of like gets to there consolidates and then maybe goes a little bit higher but Either way, it, it looks strong. Now, here's the, 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 the amazing thing is, is that if you bought this right now, okay, and in 60 days, the price was exactly what it is now, you will still make money because of the interest that Binance are willing to pay right now for staking and securing that network. So even if this market went sideways for 60 days, or whatever you want to stake it for 30 days you would still be up um you know you're you're basically earning about i think it's a hundred let's say 130 percent if you help hold it for a year which obviously you're not going to so it will be like a hundred and uh, let's say about 20 percent so you're going to get about 20 22 percent more coins then you're already hard. So if you hold 10, then you're going to have 12.2, roughly speaking, mm. by the end. And potentially the potential price increase as well. So it was a difficult choice. You forced me to choose one. And I'm going for AXS as my choice for this week. So look, just for anybody that's new and they don't understand, why, why is someone going to give them that high an interest rate just for buying into this coin? Like why, how can they get that? Because obviously someone's, someone that's new to this and don't really understand it, their alerts are probably going to be going off going, well, this sounds too good to be true almost. Like why, why is someone going to give them that interest on Binance? Well, when you stake a coin, um, you're basically contributing to the, to the network and you're securing the network. That's what staking a coin is. So, um, why it's so high honestly I, I don't i don't know um it could be because sometimes you have like initially you know that they, they want they want to you know what what does a high apr mean it means it encourages lots of people to hold the coin and maybe at this point in time in there they don't really want people to be selling their coin so and and it's a good tactic because the reality is is that I wouldn't have bought so many of AXS if we didn't have that APR um, available. So it's, it's basically made me go and buy more. And by staking it, it means I'm not going to sell it for sure for the next 90 days. 
So obviously, if the APR was 10%, I would maybe select less of excess and more of some another coin. So there's periods of time where it's important for the project that we, that they have lots and lots of people staking the coins to secure that network and also not to keep the price up. Um, right. So so that's kind of how it works. Awesome. So hopefully that makes sense to you guys. And just for a six, uh, well, you're on a 90 day state, you said. So just for a 90 day state, you're going to get 30 percent extra coins, which you can then cash out on if you want and then keep your principal in there, whatever it is that you want to do, whatever strategy, which that's pretty awesome, right? It is really, really awesome. I mean, it's it's unusual for it to be that high, especially on a good product. Like you see it sometimes with projects that are a bit like, mm, don't know much about you, uh, doesn't look solid enough. Um, but when you have something that, you know, has got the, the kind of um, demand and use case and so on that um, AXS has and the potential to, you know, really revolutionize the gaming industry as we know it um it's a bit unusual to get such a high apr so that's why i, I kind of you know immediately told um my clients to, to get in on this one and to you know to buy it buy it and stake it as soon as possible um because i think it's um in my opinion it's a no-brainer of course this is not financial advice just need to say that <laughs> do your do your own research guys 100 percent, and don't bet the house on it what do i know <laughs> yeah he knows quite a lot to be fair but i get your point we get your point so with that being said obviously we've just spoken about a coin that's going to give you over 130 percent apr it could double in the next next swing that it's going up there's obviously a lot of opportunities with the altcoins, but one thing that we want to focus on now is Bitcoin and a Bitcoin price prediction, please, Mr. Demi, because we have had a comment from Con, who's who's watching live on Facebook, and he said he watched a documentary on cryptos. When Bitcoin hits 170,000, the co-founder will be the richest man in the world, even topping you off, Mr. Demi. <laughs> well yeah we'll definitely look at that absolutely let's bring in bitcoin uh, so the question is, yeah so the question is how long until this guy becomes the richest man in the world i think we're still a way a ways off from 170,000, right but it'll be interesting to see what what's likely to happen between the next seven hours and seven days so if you're new to this segment that's our promise now professional trader former hedge fund trader mr andy demi will review and break down the, the the live bitcoin charts to give you a forecast between the next seven hours and next seven days yeah and, and just uh, I, i've just noticed as well last last week's pick is really starting to move um atom is um you know we were talking about it here and it's now starting to really really move so we'll nice. keep an eye on that one guys hopefully that can break this um this triangle and and really go um we 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 spoke about a 3x on this one last week so watch the show last week if you missed it so let me bring in bitcoin and let's um let's let's look at it um afresh and i will just um uh, i will look to clear this up so that we don't have any scared eyes <laughs> <laughs> so Okay, okay. So I'm going to leave a couple of things on here. Um, but it's still I think it's still um, quite easy to read. So So let's um let's let's have a little look at the at the main chart, so the, the daily chart, okay? And talk about you know, I think we we are all bullish on Bitcoin on the whole but as we know markets don't move in a straight line and it's our job to try and figure out how they're going to move and where you know where there's good opportunities to potentially get in so as i kind of said um i i i'll just remind some people like you know when we were trying to break through um we were talking about this level here um as i recall it and we were saying look you know 
if this is going to kind of go, what you need, <laughs> what, what we said last time is like, what you need is we, we kind of need this to go above here and stay above here. Um, and where we would be bearish, if you guys remember, I, I spoke about this. And this, why this green line, by the way, is because it, is a, it was a good resistance point here. This was a fake out, came back and then went down. And so I review this the same way. Now, if you kind of look at what I was saying here was that, look, what you need is you need a, a, a break above this green line. And ideally, you want to have it on good volume, okay, uh, which we got. You can see there, good, good volume and increase in volume as we break. That's what you need to see, right, when you're breaking a significant level. Now, what I said was, as long as we stay above this green line, we are bullish, right? And that's what you kind of, if you see a close back below the green line with an increasing selling volume, I would then start thinking about a slightly deeper retracement, okay? And then we can kind of speak about that. Now, you have to be ready. Don't ever get caught off guard. Just be prepared for anything that could potentially happen. So if that was to happen, and we'll, we'll look at that scenario because I think it's, it's worth considering, you know, um, in case it does happen. You know, you want to start looking at past resistance points, past reasons that resistance points that could become support points. And what I quite like about this sort of area here, this would be quite a drop, um, is that you have the 50 EMA here as well. So it, you know, if you kind of look at, if this is like the next cycle up, there's no doubt Bitcoin enjoys pulling back and holding above its 50 EMA, right? So if you kind of look at October 2020, we were basically either pulling back to this red line or, you know, holding above it. And it wasn't until here, basically April 2021, where we broke it, consolidated, and that's when we stayed below it. And that's when we had essentially the, this, this, huge, um, this huge drop all the way down there, um, you know, 50% or so from that high up to there. So this is where we are right now. So this market is above its 50 EMA, but we know in the past it's like to act, it likes to act as support. If this is now gone, it's done its basing out, this could be a really great support point if it was to pull back. Okay. If it was to pull back, just from a resistance point of view, a 50 EMA, this is a fantastic buy zone, in my opinion, right? 53 and a half, I think it's a fantastic buy zone. Um, I remember it wasn't long ago when we were speaking and I and, and that you can go back to the show. I was saying when we were here, Gavin, if this can pull back 40 to 42, it's going to be a fantastic buy zone. Like you could probably say, hear those words if you watch back the show when we did it here. And what I'm basically saying is I'm repeating the same words, but this time we're in a different position. If it pulls back to here, this is a fantastic buy zone in my opinion. Okay. So that's kind of, where the possible scenario is of a pullback. If you are looking for a pullback, you know, don't look for, this is, this is a good zone, okay? Just on this analysis. Now, what I'm gonna also do is I'm gonna look at the, the Fibonacci and we're gonna have a look to see where we are. I'm gonna do it from scratch um, to see where we are. In fact, let me, um. Yeah, let's, let's do it from scratch because it's not too many waves, so I can do it. Otherwise, I'd use the indicator, but it's not too many waves. So we have an A, B, C, uh, D formation. A, B, C, D. That one didn't quite get there. So D formation. And then we have an A, B, C. Pull back to the yellow zone. We've extended past that and we don't yet. Hold on. That is a very bullish sign that this market wants to go higher. Um, the fact that you 
had a target of the yellow zone. When you see an overextension like this, it means that, you know, people are buying even at, even at hidden resistance. Okay, so you can see that consolidated didn't create a high point as we define it. And it went higher. And I don't even think that that there is, is a high point actually so the official high point was here it went all the way to the 1618 instead of going to the 1272 we're going to take that high to low um, and we can see right now that we are basically in the fade zone right so we're in the fade zone so anywhere basically between let me just uh, highlight this for those that are students of ours they will understand this but if you're not essentially this area here is a possible reversal zone and this being the sort of um, optimal um, the market could reverse somewhere here and go back towards its 38.2 which is basically here which is and the 50s here so it's pretty close to the level that we were looking at so if this market was to go down um this kind of backs it up now on the flip side this is bitcoin and the alternative to this is that this is going to not pull back in this green zone and if we see a break above this green zone the very likelihood is is that we're going to go much higher towards this area here so 86,000 becomes the target okay so if we don't pull back and we start to break out the way you're going to want to trade that guys is on the lower time frame you want to get in on the one hour and the four hour charts and then look to time your entry you could do c to d's um fibonacci c to d trades up towards 86,000. I need to switch this off because it's driving me crazy. But anyway, leave that, that there. So that's kind of what I'd be looking for. Now, I'm going to do another thing here. And then I, I can, I think we're, I don't know if we've got time, but I can quickly have a look at the lower time frames to make a case for the breakout. Um, but Gavin will, will tell me if we have time. So here we have uh, an A, B, C, Okay, Anita, I, I, I read your plan today, so always look for the 618, as we said. So the 618 is basically, hold on, let's make sure we've got the right line. Okay, so the 618 is there which is about 64,000. I would be really interested in, in, in this area here between 64, 6 and 64. I think I'm just going to make get rid of this box for a sec. I'm just going to make this um, smaller. This is kind of like if, if you're bearish and you want to sell Bitcoin, If you're bearish short term, that's where you typically set it there, somewhere there. Like this, the 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 open of this bar, kind of like where the 786 is and the 618, that's kind of like your value sell. And if we just kind of see, and that takes you down to a target of roughly this zone here which again kind of matches up with the original area. So we could be looking at, sorry, sorry, I know this is quite advanced for some people. So if it's, um, if it is, I apologize. Um, but that's, that's the kind of thing we could be looking for um, in Bitcoin. That would be a great setup if you can get that. Um, the alternative, as I said, I would go to the lower time frames and look for a breakout, especially a break of a market angle, and then look to buy this up and just have smaller targets and get, keep getting into trades 
and just see where it takes you. Let me know if if you want me to go into the low time frames, Gavin, or if that's it. <laughs> Always want you to go and do more. Always want you to go and do more. It's great to see an artist in his flow. Um, I think you've given some really good points there. And I think most people, even though there was quite a bit of advanced stuff in there, um, I think most people will will start, if you, if you don't understand it all, firstly, watch uh, the replay on it, whether it's going to be in the Facebook group or on YouTube, just watch it again and just start taking these key zones that, that he's explaining. Because um, I think you've done that really well. And I think it's really given us um, a good idea of what's to happen. So would you say that this is the outlook for the next seven hours to the next seven days? Could this feasibly happen within that time frame or, or are we looking for a little bit longer time? Yeah, I, I think that the, the it, I, I think the breakout or the pullback is likely to happen within seven days. Um, so I think you may have like a little bit of consolidation here, but really, if we if we, I mean, for those that can do market angles, do market angles. But for those that can't, essentially, the simple thing is, is if you close above this high with a good size volume bar, average and ideally bigger than average. The likelihood is is that we're we're going to start to push higher um and as i said like i would be looking at this these these targets here like short term 68 8 and then this 144 72.5 five. Uh, but ultimately i mean without confusing people if it gets to this area and doesn't start doesn't look like it's pulling back and just consolidates it's going to probably explode higher towards 86. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm going to be looking for um, myself. I'd be happy for it to pull back um, and give people a chance to buy it a bit cheaper. But obviously what I want doesn't necessarily mean what's going to happen. So, uh, but yeah, if, if I guess that the, the, the thing that we, we will stress is if it pulls back and you've been looking to buy Bitcoin and you hesitate and you don't buy it, well, you know, for, and I know some of you guys were on that show and would have heard me speak about that 41, 42,000, but it's different when it gets there, right? Because the, the sentiment changes. Right now, everything mm. is green, you're all feeling happy. And then suddenly you get this big shock in the market and you're like, oh my God, my holdings, my, my portfolio has gone down. And suddenly you don't feel the same way. So mm -hmm. you have to act no matter what sentiment is going on around you, if that's what the plan is. Love it, Mr. Debbie. Love those dropping of the knowledge bombs. So thank you very much for that. That's cool. Pleasure. So we've cool. got Brucey on another toilet break. I think that's the wisest use of multitasking that I can think of. So yeah. awesome to have you uh, checking in. Uh, Slav wants to know, does this a so going back to the to um, ASX? Does this APR work as well on the FTX exchange, or is it just on Binance? Um, so, as a, as of right now, I don't believe you can stake any coins on FTX. Uh, they don't have that functionality. Um, I believe Binance have it because I think they partnered up with Comp, um, and that's why they're able to offer it. Normally. Normally, you need to put it into a, a staking wallet if you want to get um, if you want to get interest. But even if that were even if you had somewhere where you could stake it on Binance right now, is the I've not seen an APR on any other wallet as high as that right now. So you would need to put it into Binance, which you can do. So that if you have Binance, that is, you can just send it across. Um, I don't think if you have it in FTX, if you've bought it in FTX, but otherwise, if you haven't, then you just want to buy it directly on Binance. And it, and for those, and by the way, guys, can I just quickly add, Gavin, uh, just because it might help people, if you are struggling to deposit fiat currency into Binance for different reasons, which we won't get into, if you are, one way of doing it is just buy on another exchange and just send it over. So you, if you use FTX, for example, Slavic, if you stake 25 FTX coins, you'll get free withdrawals of ETH. 
Um, but even if you don't stake any, um, actually, you can stake FTX. You might be able to. I don't know. I, I'd have to have a look. I'd have to have a look. You can stake because I, I just realized I, I'm staking FTX, but I don't know if it has any access. But either way, you can buy whatever coin and any exchange and then send it across. But awesome. I'll, I'll have a look for you, Slavic. I'll have a look and let you know. Cool. And also, guys, if that analysis was a little bit too much or maybe you're brand new to cryptos or you've been around it for a while, but you're like what Andy was saying, you're you're seeing these opportunities to buy, but you're not taking action. Maybe you don't have enough faith in your conviction of your actions or whatever it may be. Um, we've got some extended training. So if you like what he's just done there in 15 minutes, we've recorded over an hour and a half of um, or an hour and 20 minutes of training. There's absolute knowledge bombs going off left right and center um you get to see his full toolbox of everything that he uses to find these trades in cryptos and how he's kind of 10x his account or more that was at the time of recording and it's obviously gone up a lot since then so i'll post a link for that feel free to check that out get the extended training yes if you want to come on board um and have some more professional education there will be an opportunity for you to do that and really kind of take things to the next level that's up up to you and completely your choice let's end things on this i don't know who this is please register for the Streamyard link but i think i think look we've just shown you over the last few weeks we're showing you what's possible with projects that can actually make a difference in the world um so i can't give you any banter because i don't know if i know you um so i'll try and keep it diplomatic as possible and I'll pass the buck over to you, Mr. Deming. <laughs> this person saying, can you please tell me, is it a good long-term investment to buy 10 million Shiba in you? Do you know what? I'm going to make this simple. And I'm not going to be <laughs> Don't swear, mate. Don't swear. No, there's, no, there's, no, there's no wrong investment. It, like, but you should never put all your eggs in one basket. That's, that's kind of the best way of putting it. So like, if you want to buy... Whatever you want to buy, Shiba Inu, Doge, Doge's girlfriend, Baby Inu. There's all sorts of Inus you can buy. <laughs> but whatever you want to invest in, I think that the biggest thing is is like ask yourself, you know, what are you trying to achieve? Are you just trying to get rich off like a, a craze that everybody's talking about? Uh, the likelihood is it's not going to happen. Like even it's already out there. It's already in the, everybody's holding Shiba Inus like. You know, and of course it can go higher because more and more people come into this space that want to get something that's fun. Um, but my, my recommendation is, is like, if you're going to invest in crypto, it's like uh, do some research and, and diversify and buy, buy a few projects that look interesting. And if you want to buy some cheaper, of course, you, that's up to you. Um, it's not something that I'm too interested in. That doesn't make it wrong. You know, if people bought it at the start and have made a lot of money, then they're absolutely right. The investment has worked. So that's all we need to look at. My opinion doesn't really matter. The most important thing is, is ultimately making a good investment choice that's going to give you a return. So, And just to add to that, I mean, what we've said when we did a breakdown on it a couple of weeks ago, if you might want to watch that video, is where's the market cap? How much room has it got to expand? Now, granted, since then, it has gone up a bit. Um, and people that were already in it would have made some returns. But compared to other coins that we personally know of, like even just this last few days, what you and I have been talking about, it's like, well, yeah, these are actual yeah. products, uh, projects that are actually changing the crypto sphere. And they've done way more than what Shiba Inu have done. So again, it's about, like Andy said, is it a project that you believe in? Have you done your own research? Do you feel good about the project? And then are you willing to stand by your decision, basically? Because there's so many things that people are, can tell you or not tell you to do. You are going to say something, mate, and then we'll bounce. Yeah, yeah. No, I, and, and I think those coins are great for trading. Like, you know, and that's what we spoke about on that on that last session. It was it was perfect. By the, oh, was it a video I did, I think? Yeah, it was a video that I did. The flag broke out and then it, and it rallied. And, like, you know, that would have been a great trade. Um, I know... One of one of our students took uh, took it um, and made a good return on it. But the the point is, is like as an investment, like like you said, it's already quite expensive in relative terms. So how much growth is there compared, you know, to the opportunity cost of not putting your money elsewhere? 
that's what you've got to look at. And I've said it re- re- last week, Atom and Shiba Inu, there's just not even a comparison. Like it's just chalk and cheese. You know, you've got a Rolls Royce and a Mini. I- I'll let you guys guess which one the Rolls Royce is. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, I think we end it there before uh, before we say any more. So, look, guys, thanks to Gary. He's saying, love it, love it, love it. Thanks, gents. Loved having you all with us. If you are watching it on demand on the replay, um, <clears throat> thank you very much for giving us your time. We know that you would have got a ton of value out of it if you're new to this. I'll post the link for the training um, after the show. It will be in the comments section. So just go to the comments and see the very long link. (laughs) Thanks to our marketing team for that one. And um, you can't miss it. Click on that link and go and check it out for free. Um, So yeah, is there anything else you want to say to the guys before we go? No, that's all, man. That's all good. Perfect. Good. We are out. Cheers, guys. I I, I will say one thing before you go. Almost. I almost put put you out. I'm getting music, so I want it back. Oh, that was almost a little footstep moment. <laughs> <laughs> that I think that, that we need music to end the show. It feels more authentic. Please play away, mate. Play away. Oh, now I've got nothing lined up. You can sing. Guys, this is what I have to put up with. He probably thought we were <laughs> off air. This is what Diva Demi's really like. <laughs> <laughs> See you later, guys. See you later, guys. <laughs>